I'd rather turn into a flaming homosexual than turn my back on Harlem or Atla. That's right. You want to take me out of Harlem, you're going to take me out of the box. I'd rather live in Rikers Island prison than turn my back on Harlem or live anyplace else other than Harlem. I, this is God's country. This is where God has spoken. Even if God had not renamed Harlem, I would still want to live in. I love it because I love the people. I love the rhythm of the people. And even now when I walk down 125th Street and I see the merchants out there barking their wares on 125th Street, I hear the various music and I see the beautiful colors of the people, the very colorful people on 125th Street. It does something to me. It just, it's like, oh Lord, how wonderful it is. The spirit of the people, the market, their incense, they're still selling dashikas in this late day and age. Out on 125th Street, I love the people. That's why I want to stay here. That's why I'm not going anywhere else. You know, the devil set the gentrifiers up here. When I started talking about how beautiful Harlem is and Champs Elysees and Rodeo Drive and Collins Avenue, the devil sent the gentrifiers up here to try to quash that. They came up here with David Dinkins and Al Sharpton, buying up the place with beads and mirrors and uh, hustling the, the sellout pinch nosed Negroes who are nothing more than mockingbirds of some other ideology other than the, the prophecy of Almighty God. But I love this community. Allah! That's what God said. That is not a mimic sound. Now, you go home and pull up your encyclopedia and read about the mockingbird. And it'll tell you that the mockingbird, the northern mockingbird, can make sounds, mimic sounds. They're not his own. They're just sounds of something else he's heard. But Allah is a sound that no man had heard, not even the mockingbirds, had ever, until God spoke it. Allah! Nobody had ever heard that sound. Nobody, 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 not even men nor angels ever heard that sound. Allah! So when you hear the politicians, the mockingbird religious leaders, they're just mimicking what they've heard. But they're not, they have not heard the sound of God. And Allah is the land where God has put this church building where I now stand, in case you're someplace else watching this. And um, if you come to the Allah church building, in this building where I'm at now, uh, this is a building where if you come, people like Dorcas Little John, who has been wrestling with problems for years, but she's welcome to come into this house. She doesn't have to have on fancy garb. Don't have to be wearing special perfume. She can come just as she is. And the door's open. Come on in, Dorcas! That's what outlaw means. <laughs> when you love the people, you love poor people. Outlaw loves poor people. You love Dorcas Lillian. Outlaw, this building. Atla ministry is where thousands have been housed. We've given housing to people when they couldn't house themselves. We fed millions who couldn't feed themselves. We've given gifts to people who had not gotten a Christmas gift in years. Men didn't know what to do with it, started crying that somebody else would give them a Christmas gift. Hadn't had one in years. We baptized in our baptismal pool. In the Art Law building, we baptized men and women with AIDS, many of them dying and wanted the last rites of a baptism. And I stood in the water with them and baptized them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Blessed Holy Ghost. Art Law, this building, that's, that's what this building does. And it does it because it loves the people. We love God's people, we love God's word. The Atla High School, the Great Tomorrow's Elementary School, a place where children love to come. They wake up before they have to wake up to come to the Atla High School, to the Great Tomorrow's Elementary School in this building. The Atla Seminary, where Dr. Manning teaches every day, though the seminary itself is inactive. The teaching goes on every day at the seminary level. Anybody who wants to learn the Word of God, just turn us on. We've got many platforms on which we can hear. We can be heard. Outlaw, this building. Outlaw, 
this community that I love. I'd rather be a flaming homosexual than ever think about leaving this community. But I tell you this, if you've never worn cowboy boots, uh, I, I say this, and it's not a word of a lie. Uh, you can play basketball or baseball in cowboy boots. Now, you may not think so. If you've never worn them, you don't know they are the most comfortable shoe a man can ever wear. And you don't know that because you've never worn them. So you're doubting me, but I'm telling you, they are the most comfortable shoe a man can wear. Especially they're designed right, they're made right. The only thing you need if you're going to play basketball in them, they're more comfortable than Michael Jordan's, John, uh, Air Jordan's, or whatever else y'all use. These things are far more comfortable and more flexible. You might want to put a, a rubber slip underneath the, the sole so it'll grip a little bit better, but you can play basketball in, the, in these bad boys. And uh, they're just very comfortable. I got a pair of ostrich boots as well. I didn't bring them down. Figure you don't want to see them. But the ostrich boots, they are so comfortable. They're more comfortable than the most expensive bedroom slippers. Anybody who's ever wore a pair of ostrich shoes, especially a well-made ostrich cowboy boots, they are some very comfortable shoes. So, um, but I wanted to show you those boots. As I have walked all over this community for 10 years, I walk because I love it. 